Hello, and welcome to I Watch This As An Adult, the podcast where I review movies from my childhood from an adult perspective. And this week, I'll be reviewing 1995's Rumble in the Bronx. Hey guys, welcome to the show. This week, I'm going to be talking about uh, Rumble in the Bronx starring Jackie Chan. First off, I gotta start off with. I don't know if I should start off with this or because I'm kind of thinking about it. I was like, I don't. I've been thinking about it in my mind. I was like, I don't know if I should start off with this and start the show off with a downer or end the show with a downer. I think I'm gonna start it off since I've mentioned it already. Rest in peace to DMX, man. Rest in peace to Earl Simmons. Like, this dude was. Quite possibly my favorite fucking rapper of all time. I got a weird, uh, <laughs> I got a weird top five, uh, when it comes to rappers. Uh, I think my number one, my number one is Ice Cube, actually. <laughs> I loved Ice Cube when I was a kid. I actually dressed up for Halloween as Ice Cube when I was like six years old. I had like the, 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 the Los Angeles Raiders hat and I had a hoodie on and you know, I had to, I had the scowl and shit. Luckily, there's no, sadly, or luckily, I don't know, there's no pictures of me dressed up as Ice Cube for Halloween, so, there's no, there's no, there, I can't prove that that happened, but it did happen, I, cause I remember walking around, uh, in, uh, white neighborhoods, and they were like, oh, so what are you, little boy? And I was like, I'm Ice Cube, you know, and it was like, oh, 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 okay, uh, and it was, I think some and some people were like they were like oh what is Ice Cube I was like he's a rapper <laughs> you know and so uh, I was even like it was like hey cook I'm a rapper cook no no I was just, but uh, <laughs> but uh yeah uh yeah man but like Ice Cube's up there uh, Nas is up there uh, uh, Eminem is, is 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 up there in my top five. Uh, trying to think, uh, trying to think who else, but DMX is in my top five, <laughs> oddly, I know a lot of people wouldn't have DMX in their top five, oh, Method Man, Method Man's up there, you know, I got a, I got a slew of rappers that I do like, but, um, I want to say, like, my top five are, like, my top five are Ice Cube, Method Man, Nas, DMX and Eminem. <laughs> I like those are my top five. Uh, <laughs> I probably left somebody out. I'm like, oh shit, I forgot about that nigga. But I, but like, those are the ones that I listen to a lot. Mystical. I forgot. Mystical is up there too. I I probably say he's like number six. You know, <laughs> I told you I got a weird, weird top five, top ten rappers. You know, like, but Mystical is probably up there, and she's close to top five to me. I love the mystical growing up. I remember, but uh, <laughs> I was a mist. I was a mystical fan, but uh, <laughs> and I even I even like juvenile. Juvenile's in my top ten too. I got like I told you, I got a weird top ten. I'm not gonna say oh Jay Z or you know. I don't even to be honest with you. I don't even really like Jay Z that much. But, you know, like, not really a Jay Z fan like that. Um, you know, like, I'm not gonna say guys like that, I'm not gonna say Wayne, you know, like, not really a Lil Wayne fan like that, you know, not gonna say, not gonna say guys like that, uh, who's another guy that everybody, everybody holds up to, I'm not gonna say Rakim, I respect Rakim, Rakim not my top five, (laughs) you know, (laughs) you know, like, guys like that not my top five, you know, I respect those dudes. I respect those dudes, but they're not in my top five. Uh, I, like I told you, it's weird. I got a weird. That's like my top seven. It's like Ice Cube, Method Man, <laughs> DMX, Nas. Nas is probably the only one that everybody would be nat- unanimous with. Even Eminem's kind of shaky to people. And like Eminem, Juvenile, and Mystical. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's like my top seven like favorite rappers of all time. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, who was I say? 
uh yeah but yeah man but like yeah i'm saying like dmx is like up in my up in my top five though man like my, my favorite fucking rappers of all time man like i said i haven't li- i haven't listened to everything this nigga put out though i haven't listened to everything i haven't listened to everything that everybody's ever put out you know like it's like i like metal too like i haven't listened to every fucking metal album that a- anybody's ever put out either you know so you know it was like i i listen to what i can listen to you know uh like you know i didn't have money to buy everybody's fucking album you know didn't have that type of money but um but yeah man but those first but dmx man those first like i'm gonna dude i'm just gonna say this i'm just gonna say this man first of all before i get into anything before i get into any of his albums it's dark hell is hot underrated classic man it's a fucking classic and now only now people are recognizing it as a classic after he's dead i was like that that album's already that album does not that album does not have one skippable song it doesn't have one skippable song even though how even how's it going down which is like a song that i know the label made him put on because like you because you listen to that you listen to that song you listen to that song in the in the order of the album it doesn't fit it doesn't fucking fit <laughs> you like it's not my it's not even my favorite song on an album but it's not bad but you could tell like that was like you need to put a love song on here you need a song that the bitches will love you know <laughs> you know some shit like that you know that, that that was record that was record label thinking to put that song on that album all the rest of the album is about fucking robbing and killing and talking to the devil and talking about having fucking uh bipolar disorder and shit like that you know <laughs> but, <laughs> but like 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 this song does not fit on this album but still unskippable it's still unskippable <laughs> you know there's not one un- there's not one skippable a- song on that album it's a perfect fucking rap album perfect uh it's about as perfect as Nas's first it's about as perfect as Illmatic cuz Illmatic is another uh album where I, I was like dude there's not one skippable song on this fucking album <laughs> you know like it's crazy uh i mean it's a little bit longer than illmatic because i think illmatic's like what 10 songs maybe i think i'm trying to remember maybe like nine or ten songs it's not illmatic's not a long album uh but dude it's he he made a fucking classic out the gate and I want people to recognize if you haven't listened, if you know about DMX from other shit, you know, like, you know, you know y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here, up in here, or some shit like that, you know, from that, or X gonna give it to y'all, all that shit, you know, like, a lot of people, a lot of shit that fucking white people know, like, that's the only thing that white people know about him, they know uh, X gonna give it to you, and they know uh, Party Up, and they don't even call it, I don't think they even call it Party Up. I don't think they even know the song. I don't think they even know the name of the song. They just call it, Y'all Gonna Make Me Lose My Mind. <laughs> but the name of the song is Party Up, okay? That's the name of the fucking song. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, what was I, what the fuck was I talking about? <laughs> I'm getting mad about white people not knowing fucking DMX's fucking, uh, catalog. But, uh, <laughs> cause, like, every time, every time a white person talks about dmx they talk about x gonna give it to you you because they saw that shit in fucking deadpool or they they've heard party up somewhere or uh they might know rough riders anthem they may know rough riders anthem you know that's another song that white people may know they may know rough riders anthem they don't know they don't know fucking with d they don't know uh uh here we go again they don't they like they don't know all these other fucking songs, Damien, Damien, quite possibly, my favorite fucking DMX song, Damien is my favorite DMX song of all time, I love fucking Damien, I know he's got, he's got a lot of hitters, he's got a lot of fucking hitters, but I love Damien, because that shit speaks to me, <laughs> you know, like, I've had a fucking devil on my show to trying to tell me to do bad things, you know, <laughs> You know, like, I've had that before. It was like I, it was like I, it was like I, it was like I have 
fucking dealt with that shit in my life where it's like, you know, like, you know, you were talking about dealing with bipolar and being manic depressive, man, you know, like, I feel that shit, bro, you know, but, uh, you know, I feel that shit a, a ton, but, uh, and I probably, that's probably why I love DMX, because, like, you know, I'm not as fucking crazy as DMX, you know, <laughs> but I connected to DMX, he spoke to me, you know, <laughs> but, um, but, uh, and I've never, I've never done drugs or anything like that either, but, but for some reason, like, he was the one rapper that fucking spoke to me when I heard, I remember the first time, it was like one of my, one of my buddies had It's Dark and Hell is Hot, and I lit, and we were like, we were listening to it, like, he was a huge DMX fan, and I was like, who's DMX, and like, you let me listen to DMX, and like, it was like, I saw God, you <laughs> know, it was like, oh my God, this is the greatest, I was like, this is the greatest fucking album ever. <laughs> this is the, this, DMX is the greatest fucking rapper ever. I was like, this dude is fucking awesome. I was like, I gotta hear more of him. You know, <laughs> that's how I, that's how I felt. Dark, his dark and hell is how his dark and hell is how it was on fucking repeat, repeat. Then he had uh, flesh in my flesh, blood in my blood. I wasn't I wasn't able to get that album. I didn't hear that album until like a lot later. You know. Uh, sadly, because I had "Is Dark and Hell Is Hot," I went back and listened to uh, "Flesh My Flesh, Blood My Blood." Uh, they had, uh, I had uh, "Then There Was X," and I had "The Great Depression." The Great Depression is not a great album. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's one of his weakest. It's one of his weakest albums. Uh, uh, an, an underrated one, an underrated album that nobody talks about is "Grand Champ." Because a lot of people, I think that's when a lot of people think that D fell off. A lot of people think that's when he fell off, but no. No. Grand Champ's pretty fucking good. Uh, he got shot down with uh, 50 Cent and Styles. Uh, uh, Rob All Night? Rob All Night is fucking... <laughs> I love Rob All Night. Rob All Night is fucking dope. Uh, what's the other one? Rain? You fucking rain, nigga? Uh, <laughs> shit. But Rob All Night, Rob All Night is my favorite song on there. You're like, if I'm gonna rob, I'm gonna rob all night. If I'm going that shit fucking, that's fucking dope. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Y'all need to go back and listen to Grand Chap. Listen to Rob All Night. Rob All Night is fucking dope. You know? <laughs> I haven't listened to that song in a while, but I remember that shit. I remember... <laughs> Rob, I, like, I remember Rob all night. This shit's fucking dope. Uh, it's better than, um, I remember 50 Cent had a song called How to Rob. I think it, it's not as, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put a blasphemy on, on How to Rob, though. I'm not gonna do that, but, like, uh, Rob all night is a, equivalent to How to Rob. You know, like, it's, it's fucking, it's fucking dope. I love it. Uh, but, dude, man, I just wanna say, man, like, the dude passed away. He had 15 kids. He's leaving behind. Uh, he's leaving behind a wife. Uh, he's leaving behind an ex-wife. He's leaving behind an adoptive daughter. I did not know about this. I found this out. But DMX actually adopted the girl from Everybody Hates Chris. The girl that that, that played Chris Rock's love interest in Everybody Hates Chris. And she also played uh, DMX's daughter in Cradle to the Grave. Uh, he adopted that girl. That's his adopted daughter. I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that till now. You know, it's crazy. Fucking crazy. Um, her name is Paige Hurd. He he adopted that girl, Paige Hurd. I think she's on power now. The girl from Power. I think she's on power. And she's on that on a Tyler Perry show, The Oval. Uh she's on that. But yeah, Paige Hurd. He he actually adopted that girl, took that girl into his home and made her his made her his daughter. Like he took care of her. And they were close to, to the day he died. You know, they were very, they were very close. Um, I did not know that. I thought it was just like, I, I saw her in a picture with him and I thought it was like, oh, this is some co-star shit. No. That's his daughter. <laughs> that's his, that's his little girl. You know, like, that's his baby girl. I was like, yo, man, I did not, I did not even know that shit. But yeah, man, like, it like DMX was always a fucking dichotomy, you know, like he was always a, you know, like, two sides of a coin, he was two, he was the two-face of rap, you know, like, there's a good side to this man, and there's, like, a fucking dark side to this man, 
you know, and I took I chose to, I chose to talk about more of the good, you know, more of his like accomplishments, you know, like his albums, you know, like like adopting a little girl, you know, like just him being like just this fucking emotional, open, vulnerable dude. And that's like kind of hard and rap, you know, like to be like this open, emotional, just vulnerable dude. Like that's not hip hop, you know, because like DMX is the type of dude that like he'll cry, but he'll also split your wig open too. <laughs> like don't fuck with him, you know, like and those are I'm like, the, like those are the most dangerous dudes on the planet. You know, like I'm like, I'm kind of like that. I'll cry, but I'll fucking bust your shit open. You know, <laughs> like don't fuck with me and don't let the squeaky voice a uh, fucking fool y'all fuck you up but uh you know <laughs> but um but yeah uh dude like dude dude had a lot of fucking like i said dude had a lot of fucking demons like dude but like he also had like this fucking like vulnerability and this sweetness to him man it was like it's very weird <laughs> you know <laughs> there's something you've never seen in hip-hop there will never like there will never be another dmx man there will never be another DMX, uh, and I just personally, I know I've never met DMX, and DMX doesn't know me. I just want to personally thank him for having so much music that got me through life. You know, like I was like, you know, like I had my issues. You know, I've been bullied. You know, when I was a little kid. You know. And it turned into, that turned into like fucking mental issues and things like that. You know, like I, I suffer from depression. I've never been this open on this podcast, but I suffer from depression also. And, you know, like people like DMX, like got me through it, man. Like just listening to his stuff, just like frees my mind and opens it up. You know, like I, like, I fucking love his music, man. And I just want to say thank you you helped a 13 year old boy through a lot and i'm still here today even though i don't know you thank you that's all i got to say about dmx rest in peace dog rest in peace let's give a little for dmx all right rest in peace brother now let's move on to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That was a weird segue. Maybe I should have saved that for the end. But let's talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Episode 4. And if you want to talk about downers. Oh my god. What a fucking downer this episode was. Um, Trying to remember as much as I can. Because like that ending just took me out. Oh my god. Um... Where we left off, we we, we 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 go back to where we left off with uh, Io. Uh, I learned her name because I think last episode I just called her the the fine chick, the fine bald chick with the big old booty. <laughs> that ass is fat though. That ass is rotund. But uh, anyway, <laughs> but anyway, uh, what the fuck was I saying? Oh yeah, but like we left off with Io, she was talking to Bucky about Zemo and she was like you got 20 I think she told me she got he got 24 hours with Zemo and after that she coming for him and that was it uh, <laughs> and then they uh so the Flash Smashers girl went to a funeral like one of her uh one of her friends or something I was was I even paying attention to that? Because I don't even remember. Because, like, th- these episodes go by so fast that a lot of the shit don't stick with you. But, uh, it's probably something I gotta watch again. But, uh, but, like, she, one of her friends or something died. And she went to her funeral. And fucking Zemo. And fucking Baron Zemo, bruh. This nigga. Because, like, they were trying to get information out of people. Uh, Sam and Bucky. We're trying to get information out of people to know where uh, the uh, Flash Masher girl was going to go. I forgot her name. What was her fucking name? Her name? Carly? Carly? The Carly. They were trying to know where Carly is. Uh, they were trying to see where she was. They were trying to find her. And they went 
Because, like, Bucky and Sam just, you know, did old school. Like, yo, you know where so-and-so is? You know where she at? You know? <laughs> and it's fucking, I was like, fucking Zemo, bruh. Fucking Baron Zemo. This nigga had, like, a bag of Turkish delights, which is, like, candy. And which I think it's like candy. It looked like candy. I've never had a Turkish delight. But, uh... <laughs> From what I heard, they're quite delicious. But uh I might want to try one. But uh he uh had a Turkish delight. He had a bag of Turkish delights. He found some kids. He sung to them. He sung like bye bye black sheep to the kids in a fucking creepy ass way. Fucking he got some Baron Zemo got some pedophile tendencies. Uh <laughs> by the way. Uh dude threw the Turkish delights on a fucking table. And you had the kids come over, and one of the kids told one of the kids, he's like, hey, do you know where Carly is? And, like, the kid just fucking told him because he gave her some fucking candy. <laughs> oh, my God. And so Baron Zemo knows where Carly is, the Flag Smasher girl. I'm just going to call her Flag Smasher because in the comics there actually is a character called Flag Smasher, but it's a big buff dude. <laughs> You know, <laughs> the big dude in here, Flag Smash, is a little biracial girl with red hair. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, she's cute, though. I like the, the actress that plays her. I think her name is Erin Kellyman. She's cute. She's actually a cute little girl. Uh, She's, like, fucking 22. She's too fucking young for me, but, you know. <laughs> but I was saying, like, she's a cute little girl. It was like, if I was 22, I'd, I'd ask her out. But, uh, anyway, uh moving on um moving on uh but yeah they but anyway i was saying like flash masher in the comics he's a big dude but here he's she's a little fucking redhead biracial girl but i digress um so they go and fucking find carly uh sam is like i want to talk to her and who the fuck sticks his goddamn nose and everything but fucking john walker John Walker, bitch ass. I'm, I'm, I am. After what he did in this episode, I'm totally fine. I'm not on the fence about this nigga no more. <laughs> I am not on the fence about him anymore. Isn't He's a fucking bitch. John Walker, bitch ass. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> and his little, and his little pet coon Lamar. Uh, <laughs> they showed up. Uh, <laughs> they showed up. And just fucked everything up. Right? And uh Sam is just like, yo, I'm gonna go talk to her. And they're like, John's like, well, we need to put her in prison. She needs to be I need to catch her. And <laughs> all this shit. And um So they go, so Sam goes and fucking talks to her. Sam goes and fucking talks to her. And he's he's got her. He's fucking got her. Fucking John Walker, bitch ass. That's gonna be his name from now on. Bitch ass John Walker. Bitch ass John Walker. Goes and fucks it all up with his fucking hoorah bullshit. And like, she escapes. She fucking escapes. She had the super soldier serum on it on her. Baron Zemo tried to bust a kick, bust her fucking melon open, by the way. He saw her. He was like, you were busting caps at her ass. Uh, and then he like he saw like she had the super serum serum and like spilled all over the place in the vials. And he just started smashing the motherfuckers. And I think like bitch ass John Walker stopped him. And you know what happens after that. Uh John Walker saw the super ser- super soldier serum and you can make your conclusions on there. Uh if you haven't seen the episode. If you haven't seen the episode, well, I'm spoiling it for you, motherfucker. But, uh, <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, but anyway, um, anyway, yeah. So they, they were telling, they were telling John Walker, bitch ass, I'm, I'm sorry, bitch ass John Walker. They were telling bitch ass John Walker that you fucked everything up. And Sam was like, I had her. I could have brought her in, like, without fucking threat. You know, like, I could have brought her in. And you're like, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And blah, 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 and all his bitch-assness. And then, 
the fucking Dora Laje shows up. Because Sam and John were about to fight. They was about to square up. And then the Dora Milaje just came out of nowhere. I don't know how they got in the fucking room. <laughs> The Dora Milaje came up in that motherfucker. I don't know how the fuck they got in the room. Uh, and like, it just the spear just came fucking flying at their ass. And then the Dora Milaje up in that motherfucker. And so, bitch ass John Walker go try to talk to the Dora Milaje like they stupid. You know, because all he know is bitch assness. Uh, so he tried to talk to them like they stupid. Uh, and then he goes, and like, even Sam and Bucky were like, dude, I don't think you want to fucking test them. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, like, these some bad bitches. Uh, and so bitch ass John Walker gonna go ahead and put his fucking hand on IO. Career Builder is made for people who have that thing. You know, those superpowers that make you good at your job. The skills you bring to work. And CareerBuilder knows those skills make you right for other jobs, too. Higher paying jobs with benefits. Jobs you never thought of trying. Are you a people person? Work from home as a customer service rep? Are you organized and like driving? Become a delivery driver. You have the skills it takes. And CareerBuilder.com has the jobs to get you hired fast. Visit CareerBuilder.com. And she gave that nigga that work. <laughs> she gave him that fucking work. <laughs> and the door, then Sam and Bucky got fucking fight the Dora Milaje. <laughs> you know, and Zemo, Zemo was like, I see y'all fighting. Uh, this is my time to exit. You know, <laughs> Zemo escapes. He gets the fuck up out of there. Uh, <laughs> like he crawled to a fucking sewer like a goddamn Ninja Turtle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they gave John Walker that goddamn work. It, it was oh my god, and he got embarrassed. And he was like, "They're they're not even super soldiers." He was like, "You got like a little fucking like John bitch ass John Walker got like a fucking little dick complex, you know? <laughs> he got a little dick complex about it. So he went and took that. He went and took that blue stuff and became super strong." And so, like the second time, so this is what this is what set Sam off. Carly calls Sam's sister and threatened her. So Sam is like, "All right, I gotta go get this bitch." You know, so he threatening my family, and like he threatened her and his nephew. So he was like, "Nah, nah, you threatening my family? You got to go now." Uh, so he was so he went in Falcon uniform. Him and Bucky we got in their costumes. And they went to go find this bitch. <laughs> and you like, you threatened, and like Sam was like, you threatened my family? That's how it's going down? You know? <laughs> he was just like, you know? <laughs> he was like, I'm about to kill your ass, bitch. Or <laughs> some shit like that. But, uh, <laughs> I was trying to be nice, but you, uh, you, you, you went too far. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and then, bitch ass John Walker and Pet Coon Lamar, uh, showed up. And just made things a little bit worse. And so they had like a big ass fight. Uh, they captured Pet Coon Lamar. The Flag Smashers. They tied him up and shit. Uh, for what happened to him later. He probably might have wanted to stay tied up. Um, so uh, they had this big ass fight. Uh, they got knives and shit. I think. Carly. Was about to stab. Bitch ass John Walker. And. Uh, Pet Coon Lamar, uh, I'm not gonna call him this cause, cause what happened, I'm just gonna call him Lamar, uh, stepped in, tackled Carly, Carly got him to fuck off, and she like fucking threw this motherfucker at a pillar, and broke his neck, that's right, Lamar is dead, <laughs> she killed Lamar, and, uh, bitch ass John Walker went over to you like, Lamar, Lamar, wake up, Lamar, Lamar, and he's just like, uh, hey, 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 ain't nobody home, brother, he dead, so, bitch ass John Walker go crazy, and start, like, chasing the flag smashers, he catch one of the flag smashers, who, uh, ironically, uh, is a big fan of Captain America, by the way, uh, and he fucking murders that nigga, he like, 
decapitates that motherfucker. He fucking takes his head off with the shield. And guess what happened? He did that shit in front of everybody. In front of civilians. Everybody got everybody got they got their camera phones out. All that shit. Everybody saw Captain America kill somebody. He had blood on the shield and everything. I was like, oh man, this nigga, this motherfucker done. <laughs> he, he done for show. You know, he done. Uh <laughs> this is like this is like one of the best episodes though. This is one of the best episodes so far right now, man. I'm kind of sad that there's only like two more episodes left. I wish there was like at least like I wish this was eight episodes like WandaVision, really. Because uh, where do they go from here? Where do they fucking go from here? I guess we just gonna have to find out. I'll be back with my review for Rumble in the Bronx after these messages. Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast, providing podcasters with a flat rate for ad space so you always know how much you get when you include an ad for Podgo. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at p-o-d-g-o dot c-o. And be sure to add our podcast in the how did you hear about Podgo section of the application. All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Rumble in the Bronx, 1995. You know, I like to start it off. Let's talk about how I saw it as a child. Initially, I did not see this in the theaters. Uh, I did not see it when it initially came out, actually. I saw this a couple years after it came out. I believe I saw this movie as a part of a weekend-long, like, Jackie Chan film marathon. I remember, I think, uh, when I was, like, I think it was when I was, like, 13. I think I was, like, 12 or 13. I think I want to say I was 13 years old. And so that was like 98. It was like 1998 uh, when I was 13. And so, because I remember, yeah, I think I remember. Uh, I watched the Jackie Chan uh, movie, a uh, marathon. Because I remember, I went on, this is funny. Because I remember the day I saw it, I think I went, I went on some errands. I went, went, went on like an errand run, run with my grandmother. <laughs> I went on an errand run with my grandmother. I think I was like talking her head off. I just got into Pokemon. I think I was like talking her. I talked my grandmother's head off about Pokemon. And like I had, like, <laughs> I remember that day. I remember that day. I was like, I went on it. Like we went on an errand run. I was just talking my grandmother's head off about Pokemon. And <laughs> cause I just got into Pokemon. And I was like, I had like a big ass, like Pokemon book. I was a fucking, Oh my god, but every kid liked Pokemon back then. Like, I so like it wasn't like I was like some kind of like geek or anything like that, you know. But every kid liked Pokemon in my school at that time. So like uh I had like this big ass Pokemon book, you know. <laughs> and like I was just like and like we were in the car and like she was driving, I was reading the book and I was just talking her head off about Pokemon. And yeah, this is Shane, this is Pikachu, and this is Sandshrew, and this is a Nita Queen and Squirtle, and I was just like, yeah, this is Mewtwo. And I was just like talking her head off about the shit. And like Dragonite. I was just talking about all the all the I'm like, you got Ghastly, Ghastly's a ghost Pokemon, and he does dark energy, you know. I was just talking her fucking, fucking head off about Pokemon, and I remember that, and then, I was, I remember talking to her, I was like, we gotta get back, I was like, I gotta get back home, because I don't wanna miss the Jackie Chan marathon, <laughs> I was like, and like, my, my, my grandmother doesn't like violence, because she's a Jehovah's Witness, and my grandmother, my grandmother is a Jehovah's Witness, and, 
and she was uh and she was like oh she was like i don't want you watching that what what is that she was like jackie chan and it was, you know like, and she's like does he because sh-? she asked me does he shoot people <laughs> That's what she, she asked if jackie chan shoots people and I was like, no, he does karate. He does like kung fu. And I was just like, I told her. And she was like, I still don't know if I want you to watch that. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, no, he doesn't. I'm like, he doesn't kill people. You know, like he just beats them up. And she was like, still, I don't want you watching it or something like that. And I was just like, you know, but, uh, but, um, but anyway, um, but yeah, man, I remember. And I was like racing home and. I was I went home and watched the fucking Jackie Chan marathon. I stayed up like I mean, want to say I stayed up till like four in the morning watching Jackie Chan movies. Cause I think they had like Jack it was like Jackie Chan movies and it was like it was like they was playing everything. They was playing like Project A. They was playing uh, Wheels on Meal Meals on Wheels, which is one of my favorites. I like that one. Like him, Sammy Young, Sam Samo Hung and Yuen Bio. Uh, that's fucking that, that's a fucking good one. Uh, I think they were playing Dragons Forever. Um, I think they play Snake in the Eagle Shadow too. I think they play Snake in the Eagle Shadow too. They play Operation. I think they play like Operation Condor. They were playing all the goddamn movies, but like that was like the first time. That's like the first time I saw Rumble in the Bronx was on a Jackie Chan film marathon that they showed on TV like all weekend. Uh, because <laughs> I think cause I want to think I want to say that they showed some other shit too. Because I think that's why I saw the Heroic Trio for the first time too, which probably another movie i'll get into later uh, but i like that movie too the the heroic trio um I, i'll explain that one later whenever i get to it but uh <laughs> so you gotta stay tuned people stay tuned make sure you follow on spotify and, and like on apple Podcasts. remember all that but uh <laughs> but anyway uh those ratings will be good too if you can drop me some ratings and tell me you like the show that'll be that'll be nice as well but uh anyway yeah back to uh, rumble in the bronx um uh <laughs> back to rumble in the bronx uh but yeah that's the first time i saw rumble in the bronx i saw it in a film marathon so because like i've always been a big fan of like asian action films the asian cinema so like this shit was like right up my alley because like i'm like the movies i could talk about on this uh podcast dude uh i've always been a fan of like asian cinema like you ever seen the bride with the white hair uh you know like have you ever seen that movie that movie's dope uh like i said heroic trio executioners uh 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 god damn it uh lady dragons you know a lot of great fucking all and all those all those movies are about women you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that that's just the tip that's just the tippy top um but anyway um yeah i've always been a, i've always been a big fan of asian cinema i've always fucking loved it since i was a little kid uh so this shit was right up my fucking alley um let's get into the movie let's get into like production of the movie uh this movie was uh directed by stanley tong uh the script was written by Edward Tang and Phoebe Ma. I, that's how I see it pronounced Phoebe because it's spelled F I B E, something like Phoebe Ma. So I'm just going to say Phoebe Ma. Uh, I don't know if that's a man or a woman. So <laughs> it could be Phoebe like a woman. You know, women are named Phoebe. But anyway, uh, anyway. Uh, the film has a Rotten Tomato score of 80%, which I was shocked that it got reviewed so well. Because uh, even Roger Ebert loved it. Robert e- e- Roger Ebert gave it a thumbs up. You know, it's very. It's. I'm shocked at how well received this movie was by critics. Very shocked because it just looks like the type of movie that critics that critics and Rotten Tomatoes and all these other people would bash, but they didn't. They liked it. I was very. I was very surprised by that <laughs> uh, when I was doing my research on this movie. Um, the budget on the movie, excuse me, the budget on the movie was 7.5 million and it brought in, uh, 76 million at the box office or crushed the box office, made his money back tenfold. Um, I mean, when you want to talk about the plot of the movie, there isn't much plot per se to this movie. Um, 
because the plot of the movie is very flimsy because like it starts off with uh, Jackie Chan's character named Kyung. It starts with Kyung fighting off like a gang. You know, like they're a gang, like they terrorize the city and shit. He he gets involved and like they start just start trying to make his life a living hell, pretty much. They just <laughs> when he intervene he interfered one time with them and they was just like, yeah, we just gonna make this dude a li- this dude a living hell and like his life a living hell until we fucking kill him. You know, pretty much it was <laughs> it started off as that and I like that. But then it devolved into like this like low budget James Bond film about diamonds. You know, and they're fighting like these fucking international jewel thieves or whatever the fuck, you know. <laughs> it's like these guys in like men in black suits and shit. You know? <laughs> it turns into that. And so like it's kind of a flimsy It's kind of a flimsy premise. It's kind of a flimsy plot. So, um, you got that. So, we got that. Uh, the best, the best thing about this whole movie is Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan is a star. Jackie Chan is a star. Uh, this is his, uh, first, uh, starring, uh, role. This is, like, his, this is, like, his introduction to America, pretty much. Uh, like, cause I don't think anybody in America knew who he was. Like mainstream America didn't know who he was before this movie. He like he's he's a huge megastar by this time in China. Huge megastar in China. Uh you know this movie I think uh is probably the uh the the, the best showcase of his talent. Not a great movie, but it's like it's the best showcase of Jackie Chan's talent. You know, like, the fight scenes and the stunts are, like, Jackie Chan. Like, they show Jackie Chan in, like, his purest form. You know, because I'm, like, because, like, I go back and look at this movie. I was like, wow. It was like, this is what Jackie Chan is. You know, because even, like, the fight scenes are great. Him, his martial arts is crisp in this movie. His stunt work is crisp in this movie. Uh, And as he gets older, as he starts doing more American productions... You can tell, like, they kind of watered him down. You know, you can tell that they kind of, like, they kind of, like, make him cookie cutter. Because I think, they're tr- like, at this time, they're trying to sell him to children. You know, because a lot of kids, like, they, uh, Jackie Chan's kind of like the kid-friendly action hero. You know? <laughs> so they really, like, they're really trying to sell him to children. And they kind of water him down. Because here, he's a fucking, he's a fucking beast. He's a badass. <laughs> here, you know, like he's a badass here because like i've always looked at his like his american productions and been kind of disappointed kind of disappointed because i'm like we really don't know how to use jackie the way that they use him in china you know i I, like i said i understand why because they're trying to sell him to children and you know like you want to be careful you know like they don't want they don't want like a they don't want him to get hurt they don't want him to die (laughs) You know, because if he's dead, they can't get no more money out of him. They can't, they, like, they're not getting back their, um, they're not recouping, you know, like, they're not recouping their money back, you know, <laughs> if he's dead, you know, so, so they want it, they want to keep him safe, they want to keep him alive, you know, so they're not going to have him do the outrageous, crazy stunts that he do that he used to do in China, here in America, I understand that. Uh, so like I kind of get it but it's not the best Jackie Chan you'll see like this is like Jackie in his purest fucking form in raw form this is him right here this movie is an example of that uh the villains in this movie are over the top especially the gang the gang is so over the top uh (laughs) cause even like cause like there was one uh the, the, the main guy He's just like, cause like I think like he's like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> it's like they're over the fucking top, cause like you got the main guy, I think his name is Tony, and then you got like his his right hand man Angelo. Uh, those guys are just crazy. They're crazy. They got like a cholo Ben Stiller in here. They got like some Asian dude with long hair. Uh, like 
they look like some fucking, they look like some fucking Saturday morning cartoon villains, really, that's what they do, they look like some Saturday morning cartoon villains, I'm, I'm surprised there weren't any Rumble in the Bronx action figures, <laughs> very surprised about that, um, I would have bought them, I was, like, I was, the, I was at the age range, I was still playing with action figures, I was like nine or ten, I think I was probably nine when this movie came out, but like, I was, I would have bought it, um, but yeah, man, like, these villains are fucking over the top, even like the, uh, men in black villains that come in over, they're like, oh, they're kind of like subtly over the top, <laughs> where like, they, they try to be too serious in a movie that's really fucking slapstick, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they try too hard to be serious here, uh, there's all the black people in this movie, yes, there are black people in Rumble in the Bronx, they don't play too big of a role, but all the black people in this movie are cringe, uh, the fucking cringe, there's, like, this dude that just comes out of nowhere, oh, yo, yo, with, like, Jackie Chan's, uh, beating up, like, uh, like, the gang members and shit, there's this guy that comes, this black guy that comes out of nowhere, like, oh, god, man, that was awesome, how you do all that shit, yo, 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 and all this shit, I was like, that is cringe, uh, Jackie Chan's uncle, who he comes to see in America, he owns a, uh, a store, he owns a store, uh, he's married, he's marrying a black woman, a big black woman, <laughs> and she's cringe as shit, too, they even have her singing, like, they got her and Jackie Chan's uncle got married, and they had her singing at the goddamn wedding, and I'm like, this shit is cringe as fuck, this is so uncomfortable, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then, like, they got, like, they got, like, the two, they got, like, the two, uh, cops that help Jackie Chan, they got the one that look like Steve Harvey, <laughs> in there, like, he's always smoking on a fucking cigar, <laughs> he's like, what about it, because, like, I think, like, it's, like, the police chief or something, I don't know who this fuck this, this white guy, this fat white guy is, and he's, like, telling, he, like, he's using Jackie to try to get the diamonds off the dudes, off the men in black dudes, and he was telling him, like, don't worry, nothing's gonna happen, you know, and then, like, Steve Harvey cop was like, what about the time they threw a grenade into the the blah, 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 and all this shit, he was like, you better be careful, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, um, but yeah, it's, the black people in this movie are fucking crazy, that's bottom line, uh, also, this kid, this is this fucking kid in this movie, this paralyzed kid, he's fucking annoying and shit, oh my god, he's so goddamn annoying, He's always asking about a cushion. He's always asking about his sister. Because uh, his sister is in the gang. I forgot her fucking name. I think her name is Nancy. Nancy. His sister Nancy is in the goddamn gang. Uh, and she's like, she's never here. She's always re- she's always neglecting me and all this bullshit. And he's always fucking... Like I said, he's always fucking bitching about this cushion the, you told me you were gonna get me a new cushion and all this bullshit I was like bitch shut up you know <laughs> but shut the fuck up you know <laughs> I was I was so happy when that kid got roughed up <laughs> and towards the end like one of the minute black dudes start smacking that motherfucker around <laughs> I laughed my ass off when he got smacked the fuck up <laughs> by one of the fucking men in black dudes I laughed so fucking hard (laughs) fuck that kid but anyway uh like I was talking about Nancy uh Nancy played by uh I think I'm trying to say her name right uh Francois Yip I think her name is Francois Yip played by Francois Yip she is dull as fucking dishwater man like she's supposed to be Jackie Chan's love interest and she is just so fucking dull like she, there's nothing i'm like she's not even i'm like she's not even they try to make her they try to make her pretty and she's not even all that hot to me you know like she's not the hottest thing in this movie you know but that's what they gave jackie to work with um she's she's not that good um the uh, the only other interesting character in this movie is uh Lang, played by Anita Moy, who I've always had a crush on. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> like, I've always had a crush. Every time I seen her, because I like I say, I watch a lot of Asian cinema. I've always 
had a crush on her. I had a crush on her and Maggie Chung. Uh, if you know who Maggie Chung is, uh, she's also an uh, uh, Asian cinema star. Uh, I always had a crush on her and Maggie Chung. Her and Maggie Chung. Oh, I always had a, a fucking thing for. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like Anita Moy, uh, I kind of dated a girl uh, my first year in college with an Anita Moy hair with the same hairstyle that Anita Moy had <laughs> in his fucking movie. Uh, and she had glasses too. She's kind of like a black. She's like a black. She looked like a black Anita Moy. Uh, <laughs> I dated a girl for a short period of time that looked like a black Anita Moy, and the way she looked in Rumble in the Bronx. <laughs> I dated a girl like that. I had a crush on Anita Moy. I was like, I, I thought she, I thought she was, I thought she was one of the prettiest things ever. Sadly, I heard she like. I was so sad. I might say when I heard that she passed away. You know, like in two thousand three, I didn't know she passed away. I, it was a couple years before I do, I was like, I think I found out on, like, Wikipedia that she had died, I was like, oh, dude, that sucks, but, um, yeah, man, I was, Anita Moy is fucking hilarious, <laughs> she's, she's, like, the comedy relief in here, man, she's, like, the store, she's, like, the, st- the new store owner, and, like, there's a, there's a point to here where, like, like, just her movements, you know, because she's not really, she's not really speaking English, it's like a, it's a, it's a dub over, like, they're, they're voicing her over, uh, I don't know how good her English is, but, um, it's like, it looked like she did say some things in English, cause, like, the dubbing and the, and the, and her mouth movements kind of match up a little bit, but you can tell it's not her talking, uh, I don't know if they went, she went back and did it, but, I don't, I don't know, but, um, but, yeah, like, you can tell, but, like, it, her mannerisms, are just so she's just so spastic and erratic you know <laughs> she's great at she's just so great at physical comedy you know like she was another great character in this movie i love the i love the nita moy in this movie um but yeah there's really nothing else that i can say about this movie really like the action's good this movie showcases jackie well you know the only weak thing about it is the plot and anita moy's uh slapstick physical comedy is funny you know she's really good at that other than that I, I got nothing else to say four out of five for me uh join me next week when i review 1996's set it off until then peace <laughs>